Meteorites rain down on Earth every single year. Almost 63% of the 69,268 meteorites scientists have officially recorded in the Meteoritical Bulletin database have been picked up from a polar desert. From where? Antarctica. It's technically a desert because it gets little precipitation. The continent receives an average equivalent of about 6 inches of water annually, mostly from snow. The interior parts are even drier. Not much action happens to meteorites there. Deserts are like safe storage closets for them, and it's easier to spot meteorites there. In total, there are around 42,000 meteorites in Antarctica. Most of them have been spotted since 1976. The Sahara Desert in Africa isn't far behind. Nomads and treasure hunters have discovered over 14,000 meteorites there, especially since 1995. Then there's the Arabian Peninsula, mainly Oman, where they've unearthed about 4,200 meteorites. So why does Antarctica take the crown for its meteorite collection compared to other areas? It's not because more meteorites land there. Statistically, they can land anywhere. Antarctica wins because it's great at showing off these space rocks. The icy environment keeps them in mint condition. The contrast between the ice and space rocks makes spotting meteorites easy. Plus, there are spots called meteorite stranding zones, where the geology, ice flow, and climate team up to gather meteorites. Here's the sci-fi part. Satellites help researchers find meteorites. They use these space gadgets to spot the best places to search. Some of these meteorites are ancient, like a million years old. Now, when you think about how many meteorites there are, it's a bit like a pie chart. If you measure their weight, instead of just counting them, things get interesting. Antarctica's slice of the pie gets smaller. On average, an Antarctic meteorite weighs about 2 ounces, like a small bar of chocolate. Ooh, chocolate. But in the Sahara, they've got all sizes, so the average is about a pound. Now, let's talk about meteorites in action. Only a tiny bit, maybe just 1.8% of all meteorites found have been seen falling. These are called falls. Clever name. Meteorite detectives, or meteoriticists, get all excited when they see that. The other 98% are finds. Someone stumbled upon them without seeing the meteorite take its cosmic leap. So when we only look at the ones that fell from the sky, most are called stony meteorites. These are like regular fellas of the meteorite world, but there's also a special kind called iron meteorites, or just irons. There are also super rare meteorites, called mesositerites and pilosities, that are like a mix of metal and regular rock stuff. In places where humans live, like North America, people tend to find more iron meteorites than those that fell. That's because iron ones are usually bigger and more eye-catching. Farmers found some of these while they were working in their fields. Oh, a surprise! A bunch of gigantic iron meteorites from places like China, Namibia, and the US make the chart slices huge. Now, check out this adventure. A group of scientists braving the crazy cold of Antarctica's icy desert to uncover some fresh meteorites found what they had been looking for. In fact, one of the meteorites weighed almost 17 pounds. The ones like that are pretty huge. Do they have an impact on Earth? Science says yes, they do. Meteorite impacts are more common than you think. About 17 meteorites smack Earth's surface every single day. Since most of the planet is covered with water, there are loads of places without people around. That's why these hits often go unnoticed. Most meteorites are just small bits zipping through our atmosphere anyway. By the time they touch down, they get tiny thanks to all the friction against the air. Not all meteorite impacts are wimpy. Some supersized ones have rocked our world. Remember when dinosaurs said bye-bye? Yeah, that might have been the fault of a huge asteroid. These meteorite hits are random, and they happen all the time. Scientists have uncovered evidence of a massive meteor impact even before the famous dinosaur wipeout. This impact is thought to have triggered the biggest extinction event in Earth's history. The 300-mile-wide impact crater is chilling over a mile beneath the East Antarctic ice sheet. This mega-event occurred about 250 million years ago. 
The epicenter of the crater is in the Wilkes Land area of East Antarctica. It might have started the breakup of the Gondwana supercontinent. It was a big landmass that included parts of what are now South America, Africa, Antarctica, Australia, and more. So, the Gondwana supercontinent started to chip off by creating a tectonic rift that pushed Australia northward. This Wilkes Land impact surpasses the one that led to the dinosaur's extinction in terms of scale and could have caused catastrophic consequences at the time. The Hoba meteorite is a huge junk of space stuff chilling on Earth. It crash-landed about 80,000 years ago in Namibia. The thing is a heavyweight, like twice the size of the next biggest meteorite ever found. Interestingly, it also has a weird flat shape. Nobody's moved it since it fell, so we really don't know how deep it's hidden. But experts think it skidded along ground like a stone skipping on a lake because it landed at an angle. That's why it didn't leave a big crater when it hit the ground. And it was discovered by chance. A farmer found the world's biggest single meteorite. He was plowing his field with an ox and a regular plow. Suddenly, he heard a scraping noise. It was the metal plow meeting the iron meteorite. The Mosey meteorite from Tanzania has been staying underground for centuries before scientists gave it a proper look. The locals loved this space gem, calling it Commando. It was known in town for generations. Mosey is made of the same stuff as its other meteorite friends on Earth – about 90% iron and 8% nickel. It weighs 25 tons. Let's talk about the El Chaco meteorite, part of the Campo del Cielo meteorite crew in Argentina. Imagine an almost 24-square-mile playground for space rocks. El Chaco, weighing 37 tons, decided to show up fashionably late in 1969. So what if you found a meteorite? How can you tell for sure that it's not just some random rock? These space visitors have a few features that make them stand out from regular rocks. Firstly, meteorites are often heavier than they look because they're packed with heavy metals and dense materials. Secondly, most meteorites have some metallic iron, so magnets usually stick to them. If you've got a rock that's not magnetic, try suspending the magnet from a string. The third clue lies in their unusual shapes. Iron-nickel meteorites aren't smooth and round. Stony meteorites usually have a thin, crispy crust on the outside. It looks as if their surface melted a bit while moving through the atmosphere. Sounds like pizza to me. Suppose these tips won't help on your quest. Then consider this. Light-colored crystals are not meteorites. Those pretty things, like quartz, are common on Earth. But they don't hang out on other planets or moons in our solar system. Do you know those bubbly holes in volcanic rocks or melted metal slag on Earth? Meteorites don't have those either. Plus, scratching a meteorite shouldn't leave a mark. But if you scratch a dense rock and get a dark or red mark, the rock contains minerals like magnetite or hematite, which meteorites don't usually have. If you suspect finding a meteor in your backyard or something, try these tips. Just remember to be sure you've got to give rocks and minerals a real-life look from experts. And if you see one falling towards you, always remember to duck.